welcome to the Artists Behind the Music Australian series. I'm so excited today we have Gareth Leach with us all the way from Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to the show. Hey, hey thank you so much for having me, Crystal. It's awesome. Yeah, thanks so much for taking time out of your day, out of the future to come, come chat with me. Oh, wow. That's it. We're going back in time today. Right? So I don't, <laughs> yeah. It's like you get to live an extra day almost. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's all a bit of a blur down here in um in our COVID lockdown. So, you know, I'll take the extra day. It's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm down for a bit of time travel. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. You guys are, have been under lockdown for a really long time. Real long what time. I, I think, I think it's something like 14 weeks uh, uh, clocked up at the moment, another two weeks at least scheduled. Um, wow. uh, so yeah, hopefully we get to see Christmas. <laughs> I hope so for you guys as well. It's, cra yeah. it's a crazy time and mm. I don't know. I think we just take it day by day, but you've done some pretty cool things during this lockdown, like releasing an album. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I've, 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 I've managed, I've managed to stay super, super busy, which has been really, really cool. Um, you know, that's one of the, you know, I think, you know, idle hands are the tool of the devil. And luckily I've um, been able to keep myself um, pretty, pretty busy and occupied during, um, during this crazy time. <laughs> right? it's, yeah. So you guys are supposed to stay at home. No, have no cohorts, like visiting nah. other people's houses. Just no, 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 none of that. Bubble. None of that hanging out within a five kilometer radius. Um, you're allowed to, you're allowed to, you're, you're allowed to go out for, for, for walks for, I think two hours is the longest you're allowed to be out of the house if, and otherwise, otherwise um, only allowed to go to supermarkets, everything else is closed. So um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty hardcore. Actually. I kind of, I know how they must feel in Soviet Russia. <laughs> nah, it's a, uh, it's, it's a weird thing, but um, you know, it's all, all apparently going to be for the, best right so they say day by day yeah, i guess so right so that's yeah exactly yeah. but have yeah music's been great have you been inspired yeah i think this time? Uh, well i think I've, I've kept busy like i mean i've had music to focus on and and i think that the fact that we've had to stay indoors and had to stay you know you know we've had to find ways to be uh, you know creative and and you yeah. know just like just like you're doing right now with these little projects and all that sort of stuff staying online um finding ways to use our time you know, you know, productively rather than just getting in dug into holes because that's the the real danger of all this, isn't it? Like just, oh, you know, just doing nothing. So I've no, I've been writing a lot. I've I've been um, uh, catching up with some friends over, um, you know, Zoom sort of style, you know, meetings like this, and and doing some co-writes, which has been fun. I've never really co-written before, so you know, oh. I figured why not try <laughs> try in this sort of weird way that everyone's doing. I actually wrote a song via text message with some friends the other no day. Way. That was kind of cool. How yeah. So, <laughs> well, you know, I had this idea for a song, and um, and I just kind of wanted to see how it would go. So I just said, "Here, this is the this is the story. It's based on a true story." So I was like, "Here's the story. Here's this, here's this idea for a murder ballad. You take, I've written the chorus. You take verse one. You take verse two. You take verse three, and hopefully, it sort of comes together and becomes a thing. And it has. It's really cool. Cool. So you know, so." It. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, just, just doing cool, fun, little things to keep ourselves occupied so that we don't drink too much. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so do you find with the writing process, you find a different like creative outlet in your mind when you're writing with other people than when you're just writing by yourself? Um, or do you find your kind of process is the same in both ways? I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know. I haven't been, I haven't, as I said, I haven't done that much, that much co-writing. So I, I guess I'll find out as I do more, but um, for me, so, uh, songwriting has been, is always quite an introspective sort of thing. Um, I tend to touch on darker subjects rather than lighter subjects because it's just sort of where my mind goes when I, when I go to writing and, you know, I've kind of got this, I guess this ethos is if it doesn't mean anything, then why say it? And for me, um, you know, my, my, my real or my, you know, my experience doesn't lend itself to sitting in tailgates and, and singing songs about girls with a cause light in my hand. You know what I mean? That's just not, <laughs> that's just not me. So, you know, I, I write about the things that are real for me and, um, and try to try to, you know, tell stories that people are going to connect to that maybe just sort of hit that sort of a little bit more personal personal point oh, I love that so that kind of brings up your recent album you have a song on there down the rabbit hole 
And yeah. that's kind of, that seemed like kind of the darker subject of just, I don't know if dark, dark's the wrong word, just more real, right? Like it's- okay. Yeah. You want, what yeah, you totally. What it's about. Well, well the, the song was written, I'm, I'm a school teacher as well as a musician. Cool. So I teach, I teach um, high school music. And, um, and I guess the thing is that, you know, one thing that I noticed is that, you know, this is all pre COVID obviously, by the way, that um, there seems to be so much um, uh, reliance on technology for, for kids, um, you know, and, and whether that's a good or bad thing as far as them, like, you know, becoming part of the greater tribe and integrating and becoming, you know, socially and emotionally, um, you know, developed p people who, you know, can, can connect at a real level. And, and so that song down the rabbit hole is really sort of about questioning the use of technology and whether we're, we're, as in the, the the parents and the teachers and the and the the older people are, are doing the right thing by modeling such terrible behavior because we're doing a, such a bad job um, at showing the kids the way to use technology correctly. We 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 we're constantly got our heads in our phones. We're not engaging as well as we should be, and it sends the wrong messages to them. So why 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 wouldn't they be living in this crazy? you know, world where they see us modeling bad behavior. So this is sort of like a bit of a wake up call to, to sort of us as, you know, not, not sort of having to go because the education wasn't there as much when I was a kid. I mean, I grew up in the nineties. There was, there wasn't much tech, technology education going on other than check it out. This is the internet. Woohoo. Totally. You know, I you know what I mean? That, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's it. So, you know, we grew up loving it and, and just sort of getting, you know, getting lost in the, in the, well, the MySpace rabbit hole. It was for us, Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but you know, <laughs> that's it. Yeah. yeah. And MSN messenger yeah. and all that sort of stuff. And it just, and you know, the education wasn't there for us and how, how toxic and poisoning that, that environment can be. And this is just, that song's a bit of a wake up call. Yeah. Cool. I like that story behind it yeah. because it's such a true thing that we're all facing every single day. I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm a victim of using my phone way too much just, and sometimes I'm not even doing anything. I'm just like, scrolling totally. and you just get lost in the rabbit hole yeah. right? for, for, for hours right yeah and and look you know and you know even even when you're sitting down watching tv you're not even engaged in something as mindless as watching tv you're you're, you're otherwise engaged in something else that is comp other, that is also completely mindless um yeah it's it's a dangerous dangerous road and we just you know it's not to say that it doesn't have its benefits because you know we're, we're communicating right Absolutely. now and we're talking yeah. which is awesome uh but, you know, we need to think about how we model our behavior of technology and maybe just pull ourselves up. And, you know, it's, the song's not really a go at anyone in particular. It's just sort of, hey, have a think. Yeah, <laughs> you know? I like that. Yeah. I think that's great. Mm. It's great to do music that has a nice message behind it, right? To inspire yeah, absolutely. the world, to trigger conversations like this. That's right. right. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Again, it comes back to the that whole thing is if it doesn't mean anything, then what's the purpose? What's the point of actually writing the song if it doesn't, you know, doesn't do it. And I, and I, you know, and I, and I think the music should be polarizing anyway. If it was, if it was broadly consumable by everybody, then it wouldn't be good. It'd just be, you know, run of the mill, you know, drinking the cool, drinking the Kool Aid yeah. sort of stuff. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know, it should be. It should, all art should be divisive. It should. You should have people who hate it for what it is and love it for what it is. And you know, if there's a middle ground there, then that's cool. But um, but I'm happy to start conversations rather than um rather than just sort of, you know, drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's very important. So you wrote, produced and engineered your latest album, Trigger. I did. I did. Um, I had a, I had a, I did have one co-write on there. Um, but other than that, yeah, it pretty much was a, was a, you know, I, I studied audio engineering way back when in the early 2000s. And um, that was kind of my calling for music before um, I became a solo artist. I was a drummer in bands and um, recording, engineering and producing music. So for my last album before this, I, I got um, another guy on board, my buddy Tyson, who, um, to, to engineer and produce. But this one, I had a really clear idea of what I wanted to achieve with the songs. Um, I had, you know, I, I guess if you think about music as being a canvas, I could close my eyes and already sort of see it um so i just wanted to so i just wanted to sort of really focus on that and and make sure that i could uh, i guess accurately represent that as best as i could um so yeah i went i went for it hammer and tongs as we say over here and i just went went nuts and um and i set myself this creative parameter that wherever possible there would be no um electric instruments and it would be all acoustic so oh, wow. you know there's drums upright bass 
acoustic guitar, fiddle, all that sort of stuff. And only where absolutely necessarily would the electric guitar get plugged in. Um, and trying to achieve a big sound through that was, was, a, was a challenge. And I think we kind of, I think I kind of got there. So yeah, it's exciting and fun. For sure. I can hear that. Absolutely. Listening to the album, it sounds very real. It just, you know, just listening to it, I was like, oh, almost like music from the 90s or 80s. Or yeah, like big, big and real. Big and real. Big and real is yeah. what I was going for, you know. And, it, you know, to achieve that, you don't need a, the, the big distorted guitars. I mean, don't get me wrong, big distorted guitars are cool. And uh, and I do go there, you know, from time to time. Um, and I definitely have gone there from time to time in, in my previous lives as, you know, punk rock and metal musician. But, um, but yeah, there's nothing quite like sort of, hitting big and loud sort of sound with purely organic sort of instruments it's it's really cool you kind of feel like your head's in there which is really fun like you're connected and are part of it yeah totally but yeah it's it's just it's just fun just I, I think i don't know i don't know about you but i find it i find it fun to give yourself creative boundaries especially when it comes to writing something like an album like i mean i'm not a single writer if that makes sense i figure that all songs on my album should be able to be considered as singles so I, I want my my album to be a body of work rather than just a collection of songs and and, you know when you give yourself creative boundaries it's kind of um you can you can kind of you can kind of uh explore some more things that i guess give cohesion to that thing you know yeah that body of work writing a book right with different chapters yeah totally yeah it it, it, it gives that cohesion yeah exactly you're right yeah yeah oh that's so cool so what got you into country music if you were in pop or punk sorry not pop punk metal is that what you just said punk rock and punk rock and metal yeah punk rock um, and metal the country uh I, yeah I, look i always kind of, i grew up in a, in a country town so country music was always around um and it's kind of like i i got into i got into the i, I think that my original sort of attraction to, to country music was sort of in the in the early 2000s and mid 2000s where i got completely uh, disheartened by pop rock and all that sort of stuff, because it felt like to me that there was just not enough soul. There wasn't enough real instruments being played as well. This, it seemed like there was too much electronic stuff and all that sort of stuff sort of creeping its way into this, you know, this rock world that I loved. And, and I guess the country up until recently kind of has kept it very, you know, I guess rock, you know, it's in a funny way, you know, real instruments totally. being played by real musicians who play the songs and tell the stories. And, you know, it, it, to me, country music was rock and roll for the, for the best part of a decade. It's kind of slipped now, but, 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 I, but I think, it, but, I, but I think that was my gateway and that opened up, you know, that opened up uh, doorways to, you know, people like my favorite songwriters, like Willie Nelson, who I always loved. And it sort of just got me exploring country music as being, you know, my, my main sort of uh, focus or interest in music, you know? So, you know, that, that got me sort of, you know, into artists like Hank three, who, you know, and, you know, Canadian bands like the dead South, um, you know, all these, all these incredible musicians who write songs that mean things and, you know, it, it comes back to that sort of thing of it being real music. You know what I mean? Um, you know, so that's, you know, that's, that's kind of what got me into country. Cool. I like that. I love country music. It's just, it tells a story differently, I think, than, than any other genre of music. It, it, for me, when I hear it, it just, it can, I connect to it more. From well, I think a storytelling that's... perspective. And I, I know that that's across the board in all music, but there's just something about country music and the history of country music that is just real raw yeah there's some, there's some, there's something in the anatomy and in, in, in the dna and makeup of it isn't there there's mm-hmm. something that's like you know it's like it all comes back to that three chords and the truth sort of thing like yes, you know i, I think that. that you know the stories you know the stories are meant to connect they're meant to be relatively you know you meant to connect um and and that's one thing about the songwriting um aspect of country music which i absolutely love the the idea of you know trying to connect and t- trying to tell your stories and where possible, keep it simple, you know? Okay. Um, okay. And, 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 I, and I love that. So, yeah. Cool. What's the hardest part of being a musician? The hardest part about me? Well, you tell me. I'm sure. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you find the hardest? Um, take your pick. Um, look, it's, it's right. really cool. <laughs> you, got, you, got, you, got a, you got this amazing creative outlet and, you know, this one thing that, you know, as far as, you know, your own mental health and sanity, I think musicians are, you know, and, and all artists are a different breed of people, right? We need, you need to do certain things to be able to feel satisfied and like you're being productive and that you're, you know, worthwhile, which is, you know, we're absolutely, 
you know, gluttons for punishment in that sense, because, you know, if we don't feel like we're doing the, doing it, then we suffer from incredible anxiety and, you know, go into deep depressions and all that sort of stuff. So one of the hardest things about being a musician is just keeping your emotions in check and trying to separate, you know, the, the good work that you do from this feeling of absolutely achieving nothing. You know what I mean? Like it's totally. it's it's such it's a, such a funny thing. But uh, you know, I, I, I talk to a lot of um, musicians and you know people like yourself. And uh, and and look, I, t- I think that's really something that musicians struggle with is mental health. We, yeah. we 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 all struggle with it so much because you know we want to do certain things and we all have these professional goals that we also need to try and tick off as well. Um, and, you know, for many of us, that's just not going to happen, which is nuts. You know, you've got these creative goals, you've got these professional goals, and then you've got these, um, you know, they, they feel like they're external pressures, but they're really pressures that you place on yourself. You know, you feel like you need to own a house, have this many kids, all that sort of stuff, as well as, you know, focusing on your art and as well as trying to progress in your career. And then, you know, maybe one day make it, whatever the hell that means. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's, it's just the, the amount of pressure we place on ourselves is, is insane. Um, and, you know, therapy is good and music is good therapy for it. So it's this vicious cycle of keeping your emotions in check as well as sort of meeting your creative and artistic and also your personal and goals as a human being on this crazy planet. So, yeah, it's, it's nuts. It is nuts. <laughs> what kind of tools do you use to balance and to um, kind of move through that chaos in this world we're in? Well, you know, I, I used to self-medicate a lot. Um and, you know, you've got things like that, but look, uh, you know, like, you know, you, we all fall into vices and, and all that sort of mm-hmm. stuff and that, that can be quite dangerous and, and not, not a great thing to do. So obviously I try to, um, I practice gratitude. I try to write down three things a day that I'm grateful for. Um, and the more you do that, the more you sort of uh, touch on areas that you probably you know, that aren't so obvious. So practicing gratitude is really cool because, you know, it starts off with, I'm grateful for my wife. I'm grateful for my kids. But then you start thinking, man, you know what? I'm really grateful for, you know, single, single origin Arabic, Arabic coffee. You know what I mean? Like that is the best, you know, <laughs> I'm grateful for this, this guitar pick. Cause if I didn't have this, I wouldn't be able to play the next song. You know, yeah. you know, there's, there's all these little things. So gratitude is really cool. I've tried to practice gratitude. Um, I, I see a shrink, you know, yeah. <laughs> well, when I could see a shrink, I saw a shrink. <laughs> um, now, now I chat to them like this on zoom. So this Perfect. is, this is basically, this is basically replacing therapy for me. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, but yeah, but you know, song, songwriting, it's all, it's all, it's all good. You know, that, you know, you gotta, you've gotta, you gotta have heaps of different coping mechanisms, I think in this modern world, because yeah, it's, it, it is a crazy emotional um, battlefield. I think, you know, I think sure. if, you know, we, we've got our, we've got our, we've got our, we've got our troubles in the world with, you know, this cold COVID and all the, the political stuff going on in the world. But up until then we've, you know, we've been pretty, pretty lucky we've been pretty blessed with this, with this life that pre- presents very little problems. So we create them yeah, in our head. For sure. Um, you know, it's like that whole sort of fight club mentality of, you know, our, our war is going on in our mind and our greatest depression is our lives because we are so lucky and we are so blessed with so many amazing, you know, luxuries of the modern world that we, you know, we, we place a lot of pressure on ourselves. We sure do. And I think that's why, you know, the gratitude thing is so important. So oh, absolutely. everybody, everybody should write at least three things. I think it's perfect. Cause then totally, it's yeah. more deeper, exactly what you just said. So that's yeah, great. absolutely. What are, what are three things that you're grateful for today? Oh, it's a beautiful question because it is Thanksgiving weekend here. There you go. <laughs> and it's all about gratitude. Um, I'm grateful for connection and the opportunity to be able to connect with new friends, new faces, um, I'm grateful for technology to be able to do this. Um, and just like being healthy, being healthy today. I mean, I could go on forever, but those are my top three right now. Connection, technology, yeah. and my health, friends, family, yeah. you know, all the beautiful things, being able to live <laughs> where I live. <laughs> yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. What about I'm you? Great. What I'm, gr- I'm great. I'm great. grateful for that background you've got. <laughs> that's really okay. Pink sparkles. Grateful for it's that. It's very <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah. That's that's bringing some light into my life at the moment. Perfect. It's really cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for for this conversation right now. Like you know what I mean. And I'm also grateful to still be able to you know 
still be able to wake up in the morning and, and, and do my job, even though I'm teaching online and all that sort of stuff. Like, I mean, it sucks, but at least I'm able to do it. You know, that's cool. So, you know, I'm, you know, yeah, heaps of things to be grateful for. I know. I'm like, oh, I could just keep going on. And on. I know. Isn't it cool? Isn't it cool when you start thinking about that? And it does something to your brain. You start, you start to look for the positive rather than dwelling on, you know, the things that suck. Absolutely. And I think it's really easy to fall into that hole of, of darkness. Cause right now in life, it's very challenging for a lot of people on so many totally. ways, just not being able to connect and live life how we used to. So focusing on the great things that we have is every day is so important. So it is, it's awesome. It's, it's, it's really cool. Good rule. I love it. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of gratitude, I'm grateful you're going to play us some songs. Yeah. Well, yeah, I am. So <laughs> Here's a guitar I prepared earlier. Um, uh, yeah, so I thought I'd play my new single, which is coming out on Thursday here. So I'm guessing that's Wednesday over there. It is. Um, uh, it's the title track of my my new album, Trigger. And this is a song that I I wrote about, um, ab- about I guess, the... Uh, the, the, the yearning for, for your musical sidekick um, in, you know, Willie Nelson had his guitar trigger and, um, and I was looking for my, um, my trigger. So I, I wrote a song about looking for my musical sidekick, my music, musical sidekick, my oh, guitar, cool. um, which isn't, th- isn't this, by the way, my, my ones that, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, what uh, is your musical uh, trigger? <laughs> I've got, I've got, I, I got a custom built mate on guitar earlier this year, which is really Beautiful. amazing. Um, yeah, so her name is Lady May. Lady May. <laughs> um, Lady May. <laughs> so, you know, had I have had her, this, this song might have been called Lady May, but um, it's called Trigger. Okay. All right, here we go. When I was a boy, they told her, listen, someday soon you learn what you be missing. Life will surely be a wreck Unless he's earning a paycheck When I was a boy They told her, listen Wailing and Willie Wound about my kind Said I'd be no good But she still tried I found those old three chords And so I figured
was great. I just wanted Thank to like so do a little two-step dance. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's 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 got a bit of a, an old school sort of vibe to it, doesn't it? I was gonna it? say yeah. old town country, like Willie Nelson. I felt I felt that vibe, and I love that vibe. Mm. So yeah, awesome. yeah, it's it's got a really cool nylon string guitar solo in there, trying to replicate that sort of Willie Nelson thing too, which is really fun. Well, um, on hence, point. That was beautiful. Yeah. Oh, oh thank like you so it. much. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to play one more for us? Ah, uh, sure. Let me just uh, grab a different guitar. All right. <laughs> because. <laughs> Got to tune down to drop D. Oh, yes. All right. Uh, so, yeah, uh, this one's uh, a song called Honey, which was uh, the previous single to before Trigger. And this is a song, it kind of touches on what we were talking about before, about um, meeting society's expectation of what you need to achieve to be successful. And, um, and I guess honey is the metaphor for the sweet and gooey stuff that we should be worrying about. And everything else is the stuff that we shouldn't be caring about. Um, like, you know, buy a house, you know, right. I, I, I dwell on that a lot. I think there's something in there for me. Um, <laughs> buying a house. But buying a house, it's, it's like this one thing that you're always told that you're supposed to do, right? Um, I don't know. Anyway, it's about not wanting to bow down to society's expectation and, you know, and telling everyone, anyone else who wants to tell you that you're not doing a good job in your life that they can uh, jog on, I think yeah, is probably yeah, the, the, know, friendliest, the friendliest say, way. You do you. <laughs> You do, you do you and you do you and do it as far away from me as possible. <laughs> yeah, <just over> there. <laughs> All right, so this is a song called Honey. Amazing. I tried my best just to be a man. I follow those roads on my daddy's hands. Did what you said, got my degree, but the door still slams in front of me. While still closing in on me, baby. I'm trying my best to get along, baby. I'm trying my best to stay strong, but the race feels so long. Working for the honey till the money's all gone. My worth by piece of land Selling their souls to the company dime But sitting in a suit ain't a goal of mine We're living our lives on by road time Baby I'm trying my best to get along Baby Thank you so, so good. much. Yeah, so great. Good energy. I just, we have the Calgary Stampede here, which is a huge country. Yeah, music, I heard, I've heard of it. Yeah. Dancing, party, just the whole city turns into a cow town. And uh, uh -huh. I could just hear that being played everywhere. <laughs> so, oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Well, I'd love to come. <laughs> you should. Hopefully, hopefully, one, hopefully one day. Anytime. <laughs>
just not right now. <laughs> just not right now. No. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime, just not right now. Oh, it's so great. Well, I love your music. I love your energy. I love what you're doing. Keep it up. Oh, you sound great. Back at you, man. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I have one more question. If you had mm. one message to share with the world today, what would that be? Uh, go easy on yourself. Have a good yeah, day. Yeah. Um, and the Raiders can go get stuff because they beat the Chiefs. Um, that's, that's basically it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> nah, be, be kind to yourself, be good and, uh, and, and watch American football. Yeah, <laughs> clearly you do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Gareth. That was a wonderful to chat with you and I can't wait to spread the word of your new single and oh, thank you so much. Absolutely. We'll chat soon. <laughs>